we shall propose further cooperative efforts between all the nations in weather prediction and eventually in weather control. We shall propose, finally, a global systems of communication satellites linking the whole world in telegraph and telephone and radio and television. The day need not be far away when such a system will televise the proceedings of this body to every corner of the world for the benefit of peace. It lays the predicate and the foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer and ultimately to control the weather, and he who controls the weather will control the world. And he who controls the weather will control the world. Originally approached me in 1984 to find a use for the natural gas on the north slope of Alaska, which they could not sell. To give you a feel for how much gas they asked me to find an application for, it was enough gas to produce all the electricity in the United States for a full year. I originated some ideas for military applications and beneficial civilian applications. Applications uh, discussed in the patents included destroying missiles. Communications control and disruption were included. There were some other ideas both to possibly modify weather and finally uh, to lift a portion of the upper atmosphere further out into space. I chose a what's called a phased array antenna for the patents because it can be aimed. Picture holding your microwave oven in your hands with the door open. Then you can move it around and send those microwaves different directions. And for these applications where I wanted precise control of where the power was, uh, I felt that was the best type of antenna to use. And that is the kind that HARP has built. HARP can paint um, designs in the sky, if you will. You know, it can take the beam and move it in, in any pattern that you, that the scientist who's doing an experiment might want to do. If you beamed it for an hour and a half, that would equal the energy in a hydrogen bomb. After I had actually left the program in 1987, one of the last communications I had uh, uh, with ARCO indicated that there had been a contract awarded for ionospheric warfare studies. And remember, a billion watt microwave. What does microwave do to water? It heats it up. Now imagine if you put a billion watts into a tropical storm. You could make it much bigger. Three hurricanes, three of them at one time. The instant that we energized it, there was between a 4 and 4.5 on the Richter scale earthquake that occurred. We were so amazed about what seemed to be cause and effect. We get to an area that has a high propensity for earthquakes in an area known as the megathrust of the Pacific Northwest. We turn it on and an earthquake occurs. Is it more than coincidence that since going online, some experts have reported strange weather anomalies, including massive floods, hurricanes, and earthquakes? HARP went online in 1994, and construction continued until 2007. There are reportedly a total of five known ionospheric heaters, including HARP, in the world today. There are possibly 20 other ionospheric heaters in existence all over the world. Hello, my name's Al DeChico. I live in Golden Valley. 
And <clears throat> I understand that this is a federal issue. I understand that from speaking to the governor's office, that they cannot or will not even make a statement about this. Um, my question is, have you tested the rainwater? And if you haven't, have you seen the results of our rainwater tests? And also, are you aware that many of the people sitting in this room right here have very high levels of barium, aluminum, and strontium in their blood? People are getting sick and dying. And we want the ADEQ not just to give us a little speech today, but actually to maybe perhaps speak out against it if you know it's going on. And if not, I would suggest you do a lot more investigation. We've been doing it for years. So I'd like a comment on, one, the rainwater, what's in it, and two, what's in our blood. And if it's not coming from geoengineering, is it your responsibility to investigate that and tell us where it is coming from? Thank you. Does the... Another example is the array of technologies, often referred to collectively as geoengineering, that potentially could help reverse the warming effects of global climate change. One that has gained my personal attention is stratospheric aerosol injection, or SAI, a method of seeding the stratosphere with particles that can help reflect the sun's heat in much the same way that volcanic eruptions do. An SAI program could limit global temperature increases, reducing some risks associated with higher temperatures and providing the world economy additional time to transition from fossil fuels. This process is also relatively inexpensive. The National Research Council estimates that a fully deployed SAI program would cost about $10 billion yearly. Weather manipulation, weather modification is not a conspiracy theory. They have told us time and time again, and by they, I am talking about the powers that be, but scientists, researchers, and so forth have told us time and time again, they can manipulate the weather. They can create very powerful storms, monsters. The government has been manipulating the weather ever since the 1930s, if not before then, under such projects like Operation Storm Fury and Operation Cirrus. So it's definitely no secret, and I'm sorry if I sound a little hoarse or chalky, it is because I'm actually getting sick and my throat hurts very, very bad at the moment. But going back to weather manipulation, we actually have something rather interesting when it comes to North Carolina Hurricane Helene and a particular agreement. Now, for those not aware, lithium, lithium batteries have been really making their rounds in the news lately. Here in the United States, where I'm from, certain items with lithium inside have been catching on fire. Then I believe there was a port that had cases of lithium, which also caught on fire. So, like I said, we have been really hearing a lot about lithium lately. You see, North Carolina has a lot of lithium deposits. Do you see where I'm going at here? There is a corporation that really wants these lithium deposits. That corporation is called Albie Merrill Corporation. Now, Albie Merrill is owned by both BlackRock and Vanguard. That shouldn't be very surprising because BlackRock and Vanguard have their hands in everything. But the reason why the Albie Merrill Corporation said they won these lithium deposits was to create lithium batteries for EVs, electronic vehicles. And you have to remember, electronic vehicles are very important to the powers that be, the World Economic Forum, the United Nations, and so forth, when it comes to the 2030 agenda. Matter of fact, last month in September, the World Economic Forum and the United Nations met to speed up the 2030 agenda. So these lithium deposits in North Carolina again, are very, very important to the powers that be and their agenda. We invited for the meeting when we meet for the 20th Governance Summit. You will use the app like Uber, but not anymore to call some driver, but automatically guided car, a self-driven car will come to your hotel or wherever you are and will bring you to the airport. No, Los Angeles is one of the cities with the heaviest traffic who told me in 2030 Los Angeles will be private car driven free. This will allow to transform highways into parks and other public spheres. Two years ago, back in 2022, the Alby Merrill Corporation wanted to restart mining for lithium at a site along Interstate 85 in Kings Mountain, North Carolina, 
that was shut down back in the 1980s. But you see, there's a problem. That problem happens to be, and reading this article back on March 29, 2022, residents worry about keeping homes if lithium mining restarts in Kings Mountain. That is right. The same exact place that the Alby Merrill Corporation wants to start mining, well, there's homes, stores, and businesses near these deposits. Some of them are actually on top of these lithium deposits. Take, for example, a technical center along Raven Circle, which is still on the 800-acre plot of land that the Alby Merrill Corporation wants to dig under. Then there's this woman, Deborah Dixon, who told the news she had been told her family's home along Park Race Road is just outside of the proposed mining site, but not quite far enough away to be spared from its impact. So you don't even have to live inside the mining zone, but you can be outside the mining zone and still face an impact. These residents were also worried of a potential buyout and they would be offered much less than what their homes were worth. Back in 2022, homes sold in Cleveland County around $196,000 and that price was increasing. These community members, these residents, they gathered in protest. They had meetings. They said they definitely did not want to move. Buying a home is very difficult. There were even people who lived farther out who also had questions about the impact of air and water quality. And when these questions were raised to the Alby Merrill Corporation, well, they had no response. These residents were going to put up a real battle. They were not going to move. Well, flash forward to February 2024, the Alby Merrill and the BMW Corporation announced a multi-year agreement to supply battery-grade lithium to BMW for use in their electronic vehicles. The agreement will begin in 2025 and includes a joint research interest in developing safer and more energy dense lithium ion batteries. But not just BMW, the Alby Merrill Corporation also had an agreement with Ford Motor Company and Caterpillar. But it doesn't end there. It does not end there. The Alby Merrill and the United States Department of Defense, the United States Department of Defense awarded Alby Merrill a $90 million agreement to support the expansion of domestic lithium mining and production. The agreement will help Alby Merrill reopen its Kings Mountain, North Carolina lithium mine, which is expected to be operational between 2025 and 2030. So with the United States Department of Defense help, the Alby Merrill Corporation will be able to mine in Kings Mountain, North Carolina, where we have all these residents, stores, and buildings that do not want to move. So what happens when residents do not want to give up their land? Well, just like Hawaii, as coincidence may have it, quote unquote coincidence, Mother Nature kicks in and helps them move, helps them leave. Now, when I say Mother Nature, of course, I'm being sarcastic. We know what's actually taking place here. Well, come to find out once again, quote unquote coincidence kicks in because the same exact spot that the Alby Merrill Corp wants to mine, well, Hurricane Helene just happened to ravage the area. This area was the most impacted by Hurricane Helene. We are talking about towns wiped off the map. This individual on TikTok, she goes by at Holy Kila, has some really interesting things to say about what's taking place with Hurricane Helene and this agreement. I'll tell you what I find suspicious as shit, that one of the areas affected by Hurricane Helene is the world's largest lithium deposit and the DOD just entered into an agreement with this company right here to mine lithium for electric cars starting in 2025. Now that area is completely devastated. This is a $90 million agreement between the DOD and this company right here to get Kings Mountain, North Carolina lithium mine up and running by 2030. If that area has been inundated, is in a disaster zone, then the government can come in and do eminent domain and they can pay you what it was worth five years ago rather than what it's worth right now. Imagine that your home has turned into a watery lot and the government comes to you and says, hey, I'll pay you what you paid for it. You're gonna take it and you're gonna go, right? What do you think's gonna happen right here now that they want this lithium mine up and running by 2025, 2030 at the latest? Back in 1947, we had the Florida Georgia hurricane or Hurricane 9, and it was the first hurricane to be targeted for weather modification. What happened was General Electric's, the US Navy, 
the Army, the Air Force, they poured dry ice into this hurricane using airplanes to see what would happen. Would they slow it down? Well, what happened was it slowed down a little bit, but it turned west really sharp. Let me show you. This is the path that the hurricane took in 1947. Does it look similar to you? Probably not, it's a coincidence, right? Moving on. I'm sure this is just another coincidence, but do you know who owns the most shares in that lithium mine? BlackRock and Vanguard. The ionosphere of the Earth has got enormous amount of energy. There are 8,000 thunderstorms going on all over the Earth at any given moment. There are millions of amperes of electricity uh, pouring to the Earth from uh, lightning strikes. And HARP could create a trigger effect. In 1983, I did radio tomography with 30 watts looking for oil in the ground. I found 26 oil wells over a nine state area and 100% of the time was accurate with just 30 watts of power beaming straight into solid rock. HARP uses a billion watts beamed straight into the ionosphere for experiments. Picture these strings on the piano as layers of the earth. Each one has its own frequency. What we used to do is beam radio waves into the ground and it would vibrate any strings that were present in the ground. We might get a sound back like and we'd say that's natural gas. We might get a sound back like and we say that's crude oil. We were able to identify each frequency. We accomplished this with just 30 watts of radio power. If you do this with a billion watts the vibrations are so violent that the entire piano would shake. In fact, the whole house would shake. In fact, the vibrations could be so severe underground that could even cause an earthquake. We will have an existential shock. A type one civilization has the power of an entire planet. They control the weather. They mine the oceans. They control volcanoes. They control earthquakes. We are now witnessing the greatest transition in the history of the human race. Transition from type zero to type one. Lasers? Really? To change the weather? Well, instead of doing a rain dance, we physicists are firing trillion watt lasers into the sky to actually precipitate rain clouds and actually bring down lightning bolts. This is potentially a game changer for floods for agriculture, for farmers, for people planning wedding parties, uh, football <laughs> games, you name it, outdoor events and agriculture and flooding and even hurricanes, all of them could be subject to weather modification. Into the upper atmosphere, the stratosphere, where they'd reflect away sunlight and cool the planet. And I know for certain that that will work. Not that there aren't side effects, but I know. And there are some bad side effects, like it partially destroys the ozone layer, and I'll get to that in a minute. But it clearly cools down. And one other thing, it's fast. It's saying that you do some geoengineering for a little while to take the worst of the heat off. You could uh, create an ice age at a cost of 0.001% of GDP. You could. Uh, create an ice age at a cost of 0.001% of G. You could create an ice age with what they're doing in the skies. Here we are looking at a C-130 with retro fitted spray nozzles. Anyway, did, did anybody ever watch the, when uh, Trump went to the climate conference? Remember what he said? Here, I'll play it for you. Recognize the changing climate and what it means to our forest and actually work together with that science. That science is going to be key. Because if we, if we ignore that science and sort of put our head in the sand and think it's all about vegetation management, we're not going to succeed together protecting Californians. Okay. It'll start getting cooler. I wish you just, you just watch. I wish science agreed with you. <laughs> I well, I don't think science knows actually. Tom, Mr. President, if you if It's gonna get colder, you just watch. See, they already know. They all know they're all in on it. It's all part of that plan. You know, you were told to trust the plan. How's the plan working for you?
China is massively expanding its weather modification program, saying it will be able to cover half the country in artificial rain and snow by 2025. That's only a couple of years away where they've already been doing it. You know, they, they actually come out about their weather mods. Why the Americans keep denying it. The state council said Tuesday the project will soon cover 2.1 million square miles and be ready by 2025. That's about 50%. 56% of China's entire surface area. China is one of dozens of countries using cloud seeding to try and manufacture good weather conditions for crops or to prevent natural disasters. Does anybody notice the natural disasters going down? No, they're ramping them up because they're creating them. So they're going to be spraying more silver iodide and liquid nitrogen into the clouds. <clears throat> Along with all the electromagnetic rainmaking they're doing, electrostatic rainmaking. You got all the hard facilities and ionospheric heaters and VLF transmitters and all that stuff. You got Solar Warden, the secret space program. Honored delegates, ladies and gentlemen, we shall propose further cooperative efforts between all the nations in weather prediction and eventually in weather control. We shall propose finally a global systems of communication satellites linking the whole world in telegraph and telephone and radio and television. The day need not be far away when such a system will televise the proceedings of this body to every corner of the world for the benefit of peace. It lays the predicate and the foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer and ultimately to control the weather and he who controls the weather will control the world. And he who controls the weather will control the world.